Well, the Lord would say, you are moving into not only a new season, but a new time. And that there are many pieces. Now, listen to this. Many pieces of your life. Then maybe they seem a little scattered. It's like, I don't know how that's going to work with that. And I don't know how that's going to work with that. And we don't know about that one at all. You know, they're just like in outer space somewhere. But the Lord says, I am in a season of putting the puzzle together. I am in a season of pulling in those who are the most out there, those that seemingly are the most impossible. For the Lord says there are destinies that have seemingly been shaken even in your own family, but the Lord says get ready to watch what I do because there's going to be a supernatural season of prodigals coming home. There's going to be a supernatural time. And when it happens, says the Lord, you're almost going to turn around and say, did that just happen? I mean, that, I prayed 20, did that really happen? Are you really saved? I mean, you're going <laughs> to, but it's going to be real. One time I was, I was in Germany and I, I was with, actually, uh, my friend, he has the go get out day, you know, every year. I actually prophesied he'd do it years ago. I like a million people got saved last year uh, through this program he has, uh, uh, Werner Nottingall. So we were going down the Autobahn in Germany, and uh, uh, all of a sudden he goes, hey, my parents live near here. Can I just stop in and see them? And we were going, you know how fast you go in the Audubon? You have to pray in tongues when they drive. You know, so anyway, so all of a sudden we're careening, you know, off. And so we're walking up to his house and he goes, oh, Cindy, my dad's not saved. I've been praying for him for 20 years. And that anointing, I, I don't know how it is with you guys, but when somebody's going to get saved like now, it's an anointing that falls on me like working in miracles, you know. And so I said, well, I'll lead him to the Lord, Werner. He goes, you will? I go, sure, you know. And so we walk in, and I see his dad. And all of a sudden, I said, I want to pray for you, sir. And I started praying and witnessing to him, well, I didn't know the night before his wife had read him a gospel track. And the words I used were exactly what was in that gospel track. I didn't know. You know, and then so finally I said, so don't you want to accept Jesus right now? And he goes, yes. And he got gloriously saved. I mean, <laughs> and we're walking out of the house of Werner, you know, the, this world famous evangelist. He's saying to me, did my dad just get saved? I go, yeah, Vernon. You pray the prayer, you know. He, he got saved. And it was so wonderful because he passed away just a few years out of that. And he is in heaven today. Come on, God is faithful. Let's say that. Come on, faithful. Faithful. He's a faithful, faithful God. Well, well you know, um, uh, on the home front, I'll tell you a little thing. My, my husband and I got married in August <laughs> for the second time. <laughs> uh, 50 anniversary, and we had the full meal deal. I don't know if any of you follow us on, on Instagram or whatever, but it was a wonderful, wonderful time. Very, very special. And uh, Chuck did the ceremony, Chuck Pierce, and Joseph Garlington was there, and and James Gall sang the Lord's Prayer. <laughs> it was wild. It was so wild and wonderful. And uh, so, so that's on the home front. And I want to talk about this Operation Psalm 91. You know, it's very interesting because, you know, I'm a prophet to nations. There's different kinds of prophets. And, you know, and I prophesy over individuals, but I'm, I'm primarily, my role is to talk to presidents, you know, and things like that. So um, when, uh, when I was in Jerusalem, if you've heard this story, please forgive me, but I want to just have you understand where I'm going here. Um, I was in Jerusalem a week and a half before the terrorist attack. And, and I was so agitated. I was so agitated. And so I got up, and there's a prayer convocation we go to every year. Janae's gone with me, and there's 150 nations that come pray every year together in Jerusalem. And uh, so I, uh, I, 
started prophesying, call 911. There's a terrorist attack being planned. There are terrorists coming. And I started using words like sound the alarm, sound the alarm. I mean, you know, I, I, I can't tell you how I felt inside. You know, when you have serious words, it hits your human emotions too, you know. So, and because I'm an intercessor, in fact, the Bible says, but if they be prophets and the word of the Lord be with them, let them now pray. You know, so if you're a true prophet, you have to have that watchman side to you. And we need to teach more about that, I think, sometimes. You know, people understand how that works. So anyway, um, so I said, that the Lord is putting Israel on the threshing floor. But after this dark time, there will be a great revival that will come to Israel. And, you know, I mean, I said to my husband, I have never felt unsafe in Jerusalem. We've been going uh, since 87. I forgot how many times. But I said, I feel very agitated. And then the terrorist attacks came. And then when I got home, you know, it's very interesting. The Lord's not leaving me alone, so I come home. And then the Lord says, and there are terrorist attacks being planned all over America, too. I'm like... And, you know, I, I'm doing this. I'm, I'm intentionally doing this. Uh, I'm telling you this story this way purposefully because sometimes, how many of you prophesy in here? Like 50, 75 percent. You know? um, because God will, if you are faithful in your gift, yeah. there will come a time in your life where you have stewarded the gift long enough that you can issue a weighty word. And so uh, when God, God showed me that there were terrorist attacks being planned in a concerted way all over America. In other words, a day would come and they'd just hatch. Let me ask, has anybody had a dream about terrorist attacks in here? Can I see your hands? Okay, keep them up. I want them up high. Okay, look how many just here have had these dreams in the balcony as well. So the Holy Spirit's warning us. Why does he warn? Because he didn't want it to happen, right? <laughs> you know. <laughs> so we want to be faithful. And uh, so, so I'm like, I was wrestling with this. And I thought, what do I do? And I, I told my husband, I'm asking God how to be able to use the favor God has given me on my gift to sound the alarm. And I began to pray. And so I, I uh, got a hold of my friend Lance Wall now. I said, Lance, have you heard anything from the intelligence community? He goes, oh, yes. We have heard that there's the same kind of Hamas-style attacks. There's chatter about it in San Diego, L.A., and San Francisco. And then we heard about 20 states, you know. And so, um, and, and, and so... I said, okay, I'm going to sound the alarm. And then when I started watching the protests go on on campuses, and you know, you're living that story right here, aren't you? You know, uh, I saw the protests go on. The Lord said, said to me, you must get on university campuses. Well, this was all happening in days. I mean, this is not something months and months, you know, we had time to prepare for. So I was talking to one of our prophets from the Hollywood House of Prayer, uh, right there by Hollywood Boulevard, uh, talking to Jonathan Sharon Nye. And uh, do you know the Nyes? Oh, you got to know them. Yeah, anyway, they have, the, they have incredible 24-hour prayer and worship right there. I mean, you walk around the corner from where they are, and there's the Chinese theater and everything. So they're really holding ground. And so, um, so but I know they worked on campuses. So I called them. I said, we got to do something right away. I said, how many campus pastors do you know? And so the next day, we did a Zoom call with campus pastors that have, like, they have doing some kind of work on about 2,000 campuses in the United States. But the prayer side, I mean, what we know, praying and prayer walking and spiritual warfare, you know, that, some of this is new. But so I said, I'm going to write a prayer guide. And... Uh, uh, I, I wrote a G-rated prayer guide 
meant general audience, and I wrote an R-rated prayer guide about the Prince of Persia and the Prince of Amalek, okay? That wasn't for everybody, you know, but that's the SWAT teams. And then I, <laughs> you guys are the SWAT teams, I think. Anyway, and then I, then I wrote one for the world. So we were preparing for our big conference, and I'm writing all these prayer guides, you know. Uh, and uh, anyway, then Sharon and I, uh, she's uh, Chinese descent. Uh, she's, I said, we need to call this something. She says, let's call it, how about Operation Psalm 91? Because 911 is right, 91 1. And so. We, we put this out, and then I contacted a lot of other prayer networks that I know internationally, and this thing went viral. We think maybe a 1,000 university campuses got prayed for. And this was in a week's time, you know, all this happened, and I know that you're praying over them. Listen, I believe wokeism is, is a religion. It's an atheistic religion. And so... You know, and then when I read that, that uh, uh, many, many young people now adhere to the fact, and they read Osama bin Laden's letter of why he had a right to slaughter some 3,000 of our citizens, and I see how many of these university students are saying he had a right to do that because of this colonization and sin of Western civilization. And it's viral on TikTok. Come on, the church has got to wake up. And the Lord says, here in New Jersey, you were stewards of revival. You are also stewards of the history of America. So the Lord would say to you, I am calling you to raise up an army. I am calling you to stand on your feet and pray. I am calling you to mobilize the army of the Lord to go forth as the Lord. And the Lord says, it is not by chance that you live where you live. It is not by chance that I have positioned you at the wells of revival, that I have positioned you here even in New Jersey and with connections to the other tri-state areas, says the Lord. So the Lord says, wake up! Wake up! And the Lord says, use your influence to wake up as many as you can. I have brought you here today, and I have anointed you here because it is my will for Princeton to have a revival in Rutgers and Yale. The Lord says, the great awakening is upon us, but the church must wake up first. Amen. Do you believe? Do you believe? Do you believe? Hallelujah. And the Lord says, Peter and, and, and uh, oh, Tricia, I have called you, send up, to be awakeners. And the Lord says, gather the pastors, gather the leaders, and tell them we must wake up. In fact, this is what I see you do, doing. I see you networking churches. I see you inviting them and say, let's come together and pray. And the Lord says, if you ask them, they will come. I will anoint you with favor. And the Lord says, it's not going to be just the charismatics. The Lord says, the evangelicals will come. I'm going to wake up many different churches. And God says, I'm going to mobilize. And the Lord says, New Jersey will be one of those states that is the most mobilized to pray and stand because the Lord says the enemy is at your gate. Ooh, it's a very sobering word. And the Lord says there are terrorists in your midst that are making plans. But the Lord says, watch and see what I will do. 
And God says even the intercessors from the, the tri-state area also must band together as a threefold cord. But I'm anointing you too, says the Lord. I'm anointing you. I am calling you. I'm going to use you to bring them together, says the Lord. So, Father, we just thank you for this anointing to sound the alarm, to sound the alarm on my holy mountain. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. God reveals because he wants to warn. And so, you know, I think what is happening is that we are beginning to understand how much of our civilization we have lost, but we didn't know. We didn't know. Because most of the church is not on TikTok or things like this. But I was shocked, absolutely shocked. And so what these people say, and I haven't said any like this this whole week in this first place. I'm unpacking this like this. But I want to say, when you read young people and they say, just like America deserved what bin Laden did because we are colonialists, so Hamas deserved to do what they did to Israel. That's what they say. That's when they're saying from the river to the sea, that's what they mean, that the Israelis are colonialists and they should be wiped out and that Hamas has, has a right to do it. Is that sobering? Come on, sometimes we have to talk about things in church that are serious. You know, in the history of our nation, in our nation's history, we know that the pulpits of America thundered, thundered with warnings, thundered. And the Lord says, I want to put the thunder back in the pulpits of this nation. <laughs> Amen. I, this is a little switch, but is Josiah here, the little girl? They went to get her. Okay, well, let me know. Can I just say this? The Lord yeah. spoke to me out of Samuel, and he said he's, he's loosing the blacksmiths back into the church mm. that train the, the leaders with their swords and spears. Yeah. 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 We have to beat our plowshares into spears. And, uh, uh, you know, now listen to me. When I was speaking to all these campus leaders, you know, by Zoom, and uh, we've done more than one, and there are van there's revival on campuses. Believe me, there's a move of God. But Satan wants to stop this move of God. You understand this? Satan wants, what is he trying to do? He's trying to stop the revivals that are at least 30 campuses. I mean, I know in Texas, Baylor University, Texas A&M are having wonderful. We're hearing about Princeton. We're hearing about all these other schools. We're hearing about great things happening. And we see historically that whenever there was great awakening, Satan always caused a war. There's something called the student volunteer movement uh, here in the United States around the 1900s. And uh, uh, 20,000 young people gave their lives to, for world missions. You know, they dedicated their lives for world missions. World War I came. They went to war. The 18, 19, 20-year-olds. And so, the, you know, uh, um, some of the, the college leaders were saying, well, we're concerned that our students will get afraid if we tell them what you're saying. <sighs> I said, well, if you were 18 and you were in the IDF, you'd be going into those Hamas tunnels. You tell them they have to be strong. It's time that at least we can fight for the soul of this nation. At least we can stand up. But Isaiah 56, 7 says, My house shall be called a house of prayer for all nations. In Joel, it says, Let the bridegroom come out of the bridal chamber. It's time for us to mobilize, and it's time to stand. And there is an anointing in New Jersey to mobilize. 
You have the mobilization anointing for prayer and spiritual warfare. So if you don't do it, who will? Come on, listen to me. This is a challenge for us. We're moving into the year 2024. And the Lord said to me, it's time for 24-7. Matthew 24-7, nation will rise up against nation and kingdom against kingdoms. Famines, passions, earthquakes in various places. This is not the end, but at the beginning of the end. And one of the leaders told me, uh, the young, the youth campus leader said that we are moving into the 2247th year of America. 24-7. It's going to take 24-7 prayer. And I want to tell you, it's not hard to have it. You need 24 people that pray an hour a day. 24-7. You know, we don't have to have everybody come up and all these people, but I am challenging you to mobilize people, and it doesn't have to be just this church, till we see that New Jersey gets covered 24-7. And America. Operation Psalm 91. Psalm 91 is supposed to be read in case of demonic attack. In the history of our... Uh, 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 of the wars, we know that our generals, some of them had their troops pray Psalm 91 every morning out loud, and they came out without a scratch. God is able. Listen, the word works if you work the word. I'm going to say it again. The word works if you work the word. So we're in a Psalm 24 season as we're coming into it. Psalm 20, Matthew 24, 7, nation rising up against nation. So, um, Psalm 2, 8 says, why do, uh, ask for nations, but in Psalm 2 it says, why do the nations rage? The nations are raging right now. Matthew 24, 8 talks about the beginning of sorrows. Listen, we cannot be ignorant of what is happening. What will happen in America and what we're seeing the beginnings of with in Orange County, did you know Christian couples in Orange County do not believe that in LBGTQ and their children, will, they ask them not to participate in some of this stuff. Do you know Child Protective Services took their children away in America? Don't think it's not coming to your door. Either the church is going to rise up now or we're going to have to go underground. I know this isn't a shouting message, but I would be remiss if I didn't tell you the truth. We know it's the truth. But I want to tell you something. You are called for such a time as this. God knew you would be born now. God knew that you would be alive. And God knew that you had the anointing and the strength and everything that you needed to turn the battle at the gate. They are not going to have our nation on our watch. We say no. The church is not going to have to go underground. They're not going to arrest us if we say, you can't transition my 10-year-old and not tell me about it. You're, they're, going to, they're going to school, and they're putting them, and they're saying, you're not a boy, you're a girl, and letting them go in closets and wear other sex clothes and then changing before they go home to their mom and daddies. It's time for the mama bears to arise. It's time for the papa bears to arise. It's time for us to say, no, no, no. Don't mess with our kids, I'm telling you. Don't mess with our children. Matthew 24 is a roadmap for this hour. The raging of nations, tribulations, betrayal, lawlessness. 
I had been tweeting, uh, you know, on X, and I had sent, I got back from Israel, and I said, mob violence, um, the, there were demonstrations, riots will become mobs, will become violent. I, and I kept sending out, this is what you're going to start seeing. Well, look what happened to Grand Central Station in New York. We went there yesterday just and prayed. I mean, we're standing in our hotel watching the PLO, uh, the Palestinian, I mean, not PLO, but the pro-Palestinian marches go by, you know. And, and, but knowing what I know now about what is behind a lot of this, I mean, I was saying every person, you know, but what's behind a lot of this, I realized that our children have been propagandized and we paid for it. Lord, cut off the money tap. Cut off the funding to any school. Shut it down. This anti-Semitism is working with the spirit of lawlessness and anarchy. Behind every racism, there's still racism we're fighting. The root of racism is anti-Semitism of any kind of racism. You know, yesterday we went to the public library, so beautiful in New York, just to take a look. And I, I look at all the Jewish people that gave that to the cities, all the monies that went there. I said, where would we be without the Jews? Come on, I mean, they, you know. And so, you know, we, we, don't, we don't hate the Arabs. We love them. I mean, I, when I pray... You know, I've spoken to more than 100 nations, and my books are like in 30 languages. And uh, when we went to Iraq during the Iraq War, they found that they had built their whole prayer movement on possessing the gates of the enemy in my book. You know, so, uh, you know, so I, I, if people say, come on, Jesus, come, I say, not without the Middle East, okay? That's my second mic. They go, yes, come today, not without the Middle East. You know, I raise my hand about that. I preach in Jordan and Kuwait and you know, Egypt and getting ready to look at Morocco next year. Morocco, doesn't that sound, Casablanca, Marrakesh, doesn't that sound so exciting? You know, the church is totally underground there, and I'm just thinking, wow, you know, I was saying, I think uh, yesterday I was saying that, uh, isn't it wonderful? I want to go where other people don't go. I want to preach where they need a preacher. You know, people say, well, isn't it dangerous? Yes, isn't that exciting? Exciting. I don't want therapy for that, okay? I ask God for nations, and I want nations, all right? I'm just, I want nations. And I said, they said, well, well what if they kill you? I said, well, heaven isn't a punishment. Come on! Live your life brightly. Don't be ashamed of the gospel. Of the Lord Jesus Christ. Ooh, there's something happening here. And you just feel that something's stirring up here. Oh, oh, this is your DNA. Come on, guys. Come on. Come on. Nations, nations, nations. Give us nations, Lord. Amen. You know, I was thinking as I was looking, you know, the God spoke to me and he said, we're going to need, and on the, oh, I want to tell you, on the way to uh, Israel, I wrote a prophecy. And this is what I wrote. The Lord says in 2024, we need a wartime president. If we don't get a wartime strong president and we get a weak president, then in 2025, our enemies will begin to have World War III against us. Now, of course, prayer can change things. You know, I don't know if you've read the book Shaping History Through Prayer and Fasting by Derek Prince. If you haven't, you got to read that book. I mean, Shaping History Through Prayer and Fasting. Because it is our honor to give Jesus what he wants, and that's nations. That's our honor. You know, it's growing up, nobody told me about nation stuff, you know. I mean, we got, of course, getting people saved is primary because that's eternal. You know, but God says, ask me for nations. My husband turned 75 this year, and he had a dream. Um, 
and and in the I think it was in the Message Bible, it said you know he had this dream, and, and in this dream, uh, he was talking to a friend of ours, Stephen Springer, and he said, "What do you?" And 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 Stephen was saying, "What do you want for your birthday?" And so so uh, uh, Mike was thinking, "What do I want for my birthday? What do I want for?" birthday. So finally, he called Steve and he said, what do you think this could mean? What do you want? It's your birthday. He said, oh, it's Psalm 2a. I think it's message yeah. Bible. Yeah, it says, do you have that? Look, look. Yeah, he quoted the message. And he said, what do you want for your birthday? Nations? Continents? <laughs> like, that's in the message Bible. So that was, Mike had this dream with Stephen Springer, and Stephen Springer said, oh, I know exactly what it is. Ask me for nations and continents. Look, don't live a boring old life. And, and today is your birthday. Oh, I'm sorry. You're my son, and today is your birthday. What do you want? Name it. Nations as a present. Continents as a prize. You can command them all to dance for you or throw them out with tomorrow's trash. <laughs> Whoa. What does God give his son on his birthday, right? <laughs> Nations. What does he want? Nations. He is the Lord over the nations. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Okay, here's, here's this little one. Hi, baby. Come up here and see Miss Cindy. Hi. <laughs> hey, guess what? This morning, God told me, Miss Cindy, that you would be here, and I know who you were, and to give you this present. Brought it for you. It's little gemstones. And the Lord says, Josiah, you are a sign of the reformation of this nation. And God says to you, I'm going to take care of you and tell your mommy someday God's going to pay for your college education. God's going to see that you get the dance lessons you need. And God is going to use you in a very special way special way in America. That's that. Okay. Your mommy will help you understand that. Okay, bye. <laughs> wow. Let's just stop a moment. Holy Spirit. You are just calling us to come up higher. You are calling us 24-7, day and night, night and day. Let incense arise. And listen, every single one of you, maybe you're a visitor. Well, you visited on a good day because God has need of you. <laughs> this, you're going, I've never been to a church like this. Well, because there's not many churches like this. <laughs> And so, Father, I just pray. If you just say, use me, Lord. I don't know how. St stand up. Let me just pray for you. Can you? Can you just stand up? Father, here we are. Here we are. We know we're at a serious time of history. And, Lord, sometimes we feel small and we don't know how can I make a difference? But Lord, I thank you for anointing, anointing us to make a difference. Yes. Lord, use this church. Use this area. Lord, we remember how George Washington's army was starving just near here. How their feet were bound in rags and bloody. How they were freezing. But yet, they fought and won the battle. Can we have the musician come and play? How can we do less? 
How can we, how can we forget the sacrifice of our forebearers? How we, can we forget the revivals at Yale and the great moves of God that came here? Lord, we are not going to miss it on our watch. Lord, make us wartime intercessors. But to war in the heavens to prevent the war from coming in our shores. To prevent us from having the terrorist attacks. Lord, we will not be afraid. We will not, we will not hold back. Come on, say, I will not hold back. I will not hold back. Yeah, there's such an anointing. Just lift your hands. Just say, here I am, Lord. Here I am, Lord. Use me, Lord. Help me pray the prayers. Help me protect our nation, our children, and the children's children for the sake of religious freedom, to protect Lord, let us never have to go underground as Christians. Lord, we know the night is far spent, but we're going to work. And Father, I thank you for this day. Lord, I thank you for allowing me to be here to mobilize. Thank you for this great body of Christ for this apostolic hub. For the Lord says, I've called you to be an apostolic hub and I'm going to give you that property and it will be built. And the Lord says, and many will come to train because the Lord says, I have put you in the place of the battlegrounds of America and I have put you on the soil of the revolution, says the Lord, because I'm raising up revolutionaries I'm raising up the mama bears and the papa bears. I'm raising up that will stand for our children and our children and the children yet to be born, Lord. And Father, we thank you that the generations will not look at us and say, you failed, you failed. No, we are gonna do our part. Who knows that you are called for such a time as this. I just put your hand in your heart. Now, Lord, you see these hearts. Let it be enough, Lord. Let us mobilize what is needed. Let us blow the trumpet in Zion. Let each of us sound the alarm not to create fear. Lord, we need Holy Spirit inspired wisdom. We need finances. Lord, we pray that the flame will leap from church to church to church, even from steeple to steeple to steeple. Father, we thank you, Lord, now for Holy Spirit, what you're going to do. Thank you, Lord. I want to pray for this young man right here. You have a Forbes sweatshirt on. The Lord says to you, I have called you to America to fight for this nation. I have called you as a freedom fighter. And Father, I thank you, Lord. You're going to be part of the 24-7. The Lord shows me, you and your family. And the Lord says, I have placed you here for such a time as this. And Lord, we thank you, Father. 
Thank you for the Asians, Lord, that are our family. Thank you, Father. Such an honor. Such an honor. And the Lord says, young man, I am raising you to be a change agent in America. And I'm going to give you your voice. And I'm going to give you a voice that speaks. There was a man in England named William Wilberforce who helped fight slavery and abolish it. And God says, I'm going to make you a man. And the words you say are going to convince many, many people about righteous causes. Even as Wilberforce fought against it, slavery, you're going to fight against human trafficking. I'm going to use you. Father, I thank you for this prayer warrior, the mama. I thank you for the prayer warrior. And I thank you for using her in a great way. Thank you, Lord. Come here, son. You know, when I looked at you, I saw how special you are. You're very, very special. And God is going to use you to win many people for Jesus. You're just going to have an ability to tell people with such love. The love of God just comes out of you. And God knew you when you were in your mama's womb. And God's calling you just like he called Jeremiah. Don't say I'm a youth because God says I'm going to use you. So, Father, we set aside what's your name? Daniel. Oh, Daniel, of course. We set, <laughs> we set aside Daniel now to be a nation changer, to be an evangelist, and to be a voice. In Jesus' name. <laughs> Hallelujah. Something, you're getting such an impartation. I don't know when I have felt such a heavy glory. It's like, it's like God passed the baton to you. Oh, this guy, tall guy. <laughs> you, you're the tallest guy in the row. <laughs> True. Both of you. Come on. You have been called for such a time as this. You as a couple, God is going to give. You have it, but more influence, great influence. Yeah. You're going to be one of the voices that speaks against what is currently happening. Right. And I see you speaking to government officials. I see God, are you speaking to city council members. I, I, the Lord says, I have put you in a district and in a, in a region that is very important for this nation. And the Lord says, you're going to be able to mobilize. And I want to promise you, God's protecting you. Amen. God's protecting your health. God's protecting your finances. And I see such a sacrificial giving. It's like, like you too, you just, you just will do anything God says. True. You're just going to do whatever he says. And I just feel like he wants to say, well done. Well done with that. Well done. And you come here. Oh, you are the cutest thing. <laughs> Thank you for this prayer warrior, Lord. The Lord says you have laid down your life to pray. I think of the scripture, Isaiah 8, 18, that you will be a sign. And the devil has tried to kill you, and the devil would like to take you out, but he is such a liar. And Father, I thank you for this mighty warrior, this mighty woman of God. And Lord, we just honor and honor and honor in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Mighty warrior. Mighty warrior. Dress for battle. Mighty warrior. <laughs> mighty warrior. God rewards. God rewards. 
he rewards. Okay, handsome dude, I'm praying for you. <laughs> what is your name? David. Oh, David. Oh, I love this, Daniel, David. <laughs> God's going to open up doors of influence for you. And what does this mean? I see you walking into corporate offices. I see God giving. I, I see, you know, uh, you going into investment bankers. I don't know. I, all I know is God's going to give you the ability to raise money for causes. And, and you're just going to hate injustice. I mean, just hate it. You're, you just can't stand it. And, and God did that. that that's, that's you. That's who you are. You're a fighter. I mean, you're just, <laughs> but you got to get it all sanctified. Because <laughs> but but the, the Lord says, this is, this is the kind of personality God has given you to hate injustice and want to right things that are wrong. And you're going to do that. In fact, you're going to fight for many causes in your life. And God's going to put money through your hands. And you're going to be able to give to the poor. You're going to be able to take care of the needy. But you're going to be a man of influence. And the Lord just says to you, be very careful. Very careful in the coming days. I mean, God's going to show you how. But because your calling is so high and it's so special. Everybody has a calling. But God wants you to be a man above men. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <Don't disappoint> <laughs> Amen. Come on. Amen. <laughs> For the Lord is good. And his mercy endureth forever and ever. Amen. For the Lord is good. And his mercy endures forever and ever. As we are coming to a close this morning, I feel like I have said what the Lord would want me to say. Don't preach past the anointing. When he's finished, just stop, you know. But would you close your eyes? I want to make sure today that everyone is right with God. If you would say today, Miss Cindy, I'm not sure if I died, I'd go to heaven. I would like to pray for you. I'm not sure if you died, you'd go to heaven. I was 18 years old, and I was a preacher's kid. But I didn't know if I was saved. I just was doubting. So I went up in front of my daddy's, you know, where my daddy was there. <laughs> the preacher's kid, right? This, you know. But I prayed, and you can look up now. I prayed, and... I never doubted again. I never doubted again. So I never want to leave in case there's someone who was like me or someone who never asked Jesus to do their life. So if that's you, we're going to sing a song, and I want to meet you right here. You know, you say, well, why do I have to go up there? Well, why not? I mean, you know, really? <laughs> I mean, yeah, I could get, I'm going to give you a Bible verse. Jesus said, if you're ashamed of me, I'll be ashamed of you for the Father. Listen, if you're going to be a Christian, you're going to have to go through a lot of things and be strong. If we're going to save a nation and we're going to change things, you can't walk the aisle, okay? So I'm going to just say we're going to sing. And in the name of Jesus, I am compelling you to come. Come on. Come on. You're not sure? I was a preacher's kid. Okay, you think what everybody, what will they think? I don't give a rip what they think, okay? I just don't care what they think. Come on. Come to Jesus. Why don't you go to somebody if you don't think they're right? Yeah, I, I think I'll stay here a minute. Why don't you go to somebody? Okay, come on, come on. Come on, I know you are here. Come on, come here, baby. Good, thank you. Come here, honey. I'm so proud of you. Come on, come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Come on, come from the balcony. 
Come here, come over here. Come on, this is a day to be sure. This is a day to know. Come on from over here, up over there in the balcony, come on. We're waiting for you, come on. This is a day of salvation. This is a day to come home. If there's compromise in your life, this is a day to step out and come to know the Lord Jesus Christ. Come here, sweetheart. Come on, come on, come on down. There's a young man, you need to come. Come here, baby. There's a young man, you need to come. Come here, honey. Come on, get up out of your seat. This is the day, come on, come home, come home, come home, come home, come on, get up, come on for the balcony, come on down, this is the day, we are waiting for you, we shop this service for you, there's a young man, I think you're probably, I don't know, 16, 18, I want you to come right now. I actually know exactly who you are. And you're looking around and saying, I don't know if I need to do that. That's you, get your body up here right now. <laughs> come on, come home, come home. Come on, come home, come home. Right now, here they're coming, come home, come home. Come on, let's be right with Jesus. Aren't you tired of sin? Aren't you tired of your sin? Come here, son. Oh, good. Come on, who else? Come to Jesus. Come on. Come on. Come on. Who else? Who else? If you're wondering if that's you, it's you. Okay, come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Get up out of your sin right now. In the name of Jesus. I bind fear. I bind the insane lying to you in any way. This is the day. Come on, I'm not going to stop till inside. I know that every single person, I'm so proud of you guys. Come here. Oh, I'm proud of you. I'm so proud of you. Good job. Come on, who else? Come on. Come to Jesus. Come on, come on. Step out. It's easy. Once you start coming. Maybe you know someone who needs to be up here. You go to them and say, come on, I'll go with you. Go find that person that needs to be up here. Go find him and say, come on, go with me. Come on, go to somebody, go with me. Amen, come on, go. You go find them, you know who they are. Go say, come on, the Bible says compel them to come in. Come on, come on. Come on, sin is terrible. It makes you feel miserable. Our doubting makes you feel miserable. But today you're gonna know there's somebody else, you're not up here. There's somebody else, come on, come on, right now, right now. How can you change a nation if you can't change yourself? But today, God is gonna help you, come on. Okay, there's at least one more, one more, let's pray. Maybe you need to go get them. Yeah. You know who they are. Just go get them. Get them. Get them. Okay. Get them. Get them. Get them. Okay. Oh, thank you. Come on. Who else? Who else? Who in the balcony? Who in the balcony? Thank you, baby. Thank you. I'm so glad you came. Who else? Come on. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Come on. Amen. Yay. Okay, come up here, dude. <laughs> All right. We're, we're going to pray. You can still come. Some of you, some of you have been having doubts about God. Okay, this is what I feel like the Lord is saying to me. You know, I didn't want to just believe anything. My dad was a preacher, and I just thought, I want the truth. I mean, you know, I don't just... Maybe somebody just told me all this stuff, you know? But it wasn't true. I studied world religions. I studied Buddhism and Hinduism, all this. And like, you know, I mean, Hinduism, I wasn't gonna worship like a cow, a lower life form, okay? Or an elephant. I mean, I was gonna worship something that was gonna be greater than me. And so I just started, you know, looking at these religions. Buddha never said he was God, you know? Oh, that's sweet. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> okay. 
And so today, and then I, I mean, even when I was going through my doubts, I prayed think crazy things like, well, well, Jesus, come into my heart if you're real. I feel Zippo, you know, nothing, you know, it's like, okay. Then I think maybe he's not real because, you know, I'm not feeling anything right now. But by faith, I went up in front with my daddy watching me. I, was, I didn't want to embarrass daddy, you know. He had senators preaching for 18 years, you know. But that day when I prayed, something happened in my heart. And I knew, I knew. So just if you just close your eyes, close your eyes. Even if somebody kind of made you come, just try it. Raise your hand. That's a sign of surrender. Raise your hands. Let's all pray together. Say, dear God, I'm a sinner. I've done wrong things. I need forgiveness. Please forgive me. And I ask you, Jesus, to come into my life. Forgive my sin. And be my Savior. In Jesus' name. Amen. You know what? According to the Bible, you are forgiven. You're going to go to heaven one day. Not yet. Not for a long time, okay? But anyway, God bless you. I love you all. Church, welcome the new members of our family. Amen? Today's your birthday. Can you stay for one minute? Hallelujah. Can you guys just turn around so they can see the new family members? <laughs> Best decision you'll ever make. Man will let you down. Jesus will never let you down. I just asked Cindy if she would stay up one more minute because uh, we were just together down in Texas and there was a release of this general anointing, you know, this like a rank in, in military, the general. And there was many people there, including B uh, Bishop Hammond. I didn't mention that, but it's just several of them. And we were talking together about how fortunate we have been to be mentored so well by so many amazing people like Peter Wagner. And uh, would you release that into this group of people? Because we are, are going to need courage. And I just want to say publicly that we accept the assignment that we were given through that prophetic word to gather and to bring people together in this region. And we don't take that lightly. So I'm saluting right now and saying, you can hold me accountable. I'm putting it on video. <laughs> and uh, you can hold us accountable because this is no joke. But I, I said it in the beginning that you could receive an impartation today. So I'm just asking you to raise your hand and by faith, just receive it. So Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, you took the anointing on Moses and put it on the That's 70. Right. So we don't know how you do this, but we know it's supernatural. And in the balcony, the kids too, you can get this, all of you, okay? Father, in the name of Jesus, I just take that anointing on my life and I impart it. I give it to you in Jesus' name. Now you have something you did not have 30 seconds ago. And you activate it by faith. The Lord gave us a commission to protect the nation. The Lord gave us a commission to pray. So you have something, kids, whether you're nine or ten. God called me to preach when I was nine. But I want to say to you, it's your mantle. Now you wear it and you go change this nation for Jesus. Amen. God bless you.